Hey friends, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'd like to show you a trick how you can create a progress bar in Power BI without using any custom visuals. So let's get started. For that, I'm gonna use the data set we already have and you need some kind of measure. In this case, optimal, it would be a percentage figure. In our case, it is the profit margin, which I have here. Now it's simply a division, in this case with the divide function using total profit and total sales. So far so good. Let's just visualize that. So we see that what it gives us, in this case, let's actually switch this to, in this case, a cart. So we can see this is the profit margin overall. And uh, then of course, now we can create our progress bar using this figure. As I said, you can use any kind of figure you want. In our case, I'm using this figure. So to get started with that, we first need to create a table in Power BI. So we can do this with uh, various functions. Well, there are various table functions in Power BI, but let me go inside here. Let's actually go to modeling and then enter and click on, in this case, a uh, new table. And then there we can create our table. Now for the table itself, we're gonna use the generate series functions. So we can call this progress bar chart is equal to, and then I simply go into a line, press shift enter and say generate series. Now the starting value is the one and the end value in this case is 100 because I want to have values between one and 100% um, based on my profit margin because uh, the maximum possible value would be 100%, which is, I mean, uh, kind of um, curious if that would be the case, but uh, you get what the point. So it's some value between one and 100. And the increment value should be one. So let's close this and that's actually everything we need. So if we press enter, we should actually see our progress bar uh, table. You can see a little calculator icon. And if we take a closer look at the data view in here, we can see that we got here values between one and 100. So far, so good. Now this is called value in here. You can rename it if you want. It's the default name, which is specified if you create a column like that, or in this case, a table like that. So having this, now we can create another helper, in this case, column inside our table. So I can create a new column. I currently have already the progress chart here selected, so I can create a new column in here. And for this column, let me just zoom in so you can see that better. This is just the percentage value now. So all I do here is uh, simply I divide in this case using the divide function. So let's say this is percentage is equal to, and I wanna use divide function and the numerator will be in this case the value. So I can reference to the value and my denominator will be 100. So to get simply those numbers as percentage figures. So let me close this here and uh, we should be good to go. So let me just press enter. And you can see that now we have percentage numbers in here, which you can also format. If I go in here to the formatting option, we can see that now we have percentage values here and I won't get rid of the uh, decimal numbers. So I simply uh, say this, set this to zero. Okay. So until 100 and we are good to go. So that's the preparation we need in here. So let's go back to my report view here. Okay, currently we don't have anything, but that's fine. We just need to have a few additional helper, in this case, uh, well, columns or measures in here. So let's actually create the measures. So let's right click on here and create new measure, click on new measure. And the first measure will be our constant line. So I call this constant line is equal to, and I set it to 50. So that's my constant line, the first measure. Then I will also create a high and a low uh, measure. We're gonna use this later on, you'll see uh, that where we use it. So let's click new measure and say, that's my high. High is equal to, and I say 65. And then I also create another measure in here, new measure. And this will be my low measure, I call it low, is equal to 35. So if we can see that, zoom in a little bit more, but that's basically just a constant value, like the constant line we've created. Okay, now we have these three static values. Now we need two additional values. The first one is the profit bar. So let me right click here, go to new measure. By the way, you can also do it in, in the ribbon up there, new, new measure in the measure tools, or of course also on the modeling. I prefer to do it uh, right clicking on the specific table. So now for the measure right here, we call this, that's our profit bar. Profit bar is equal to, 
And here I simply use an if condition. So if, in this case, and the logical test is if the maximum of, in this case, the, what is it called? The percentage value, percentage, that's what we call it, percentage. Uh, where is it? Progress bar percentage down there. If the max progress bar percentage is less or equal to our profit margin, profit margin, then we'd like to see, in this case, uh, the value, and the value is 50. Closes. Okay, that's it. And the reason why I'm referencing with a max, you can also use the min, by the way, actually, but I need some kind of aggregation because you cannot use progress bar chart percentage in the if condition if you do not wrap it inside the max function, the min function, or, or some function, any kind of aggregation function. So having that, that is our profit bar. Press enter. Okay. And finally, we want to have the profit symbol. So let me right click here, new measure. And this will be the last measure, I promise. <laughs> this is our profit symbol. Symbol like that is equal to. And again, I'm using the if function. So if the maximum of the percentage, again, percentage, there it is, this progress bar percentage, if this value equals, so here we need to be a little bit careful because remember the progress bar chart, the percentage column, only contains uh, percentage values like 1%, 2%, 3%, and so on. So if our profit margin is a percentage value like 37.35%, then we will never have an exact equal because we do not have uh, a, a dot 3.5%, for instance, right? That is why we just round it. We just say round, and then we use our profit margin, profit margin, here it is, and we're going to round it, in this case, to... Uh, number of digits, and this will be uh, zero digits. Okay, so let's just make sure that our profit margin is actually uh, exactly the specific value. Okay, so if that's the case, um, then we'd like to see actually a, a point. So in this case, I'm going to use a smaller value. So let's say in this case 30. Okay, otherwise we don't see anything, so we can close this. Okay, so then let me just press enter. That's the profit symbol. Okay, so now we got everything in place which we need. So now let's actually create our, in this case, uh, our chart, our progress chart, progress bar chart. So let me go inside, where is it? Build visual, let's do that. And actually we need to have some data first. So let's go inside, where's that? We have the constant line, let's click on the constant line. And by default, we get a bar chart. Now the interesting fact now will be that we will create a progress bar chart but we will create it with a line chart. Yes, you heard me right. So let's explore how that works. So at first, we currently have our charts. So let's go back inside the Builder Visual and change it to a line chart, okay? So now we have just one dot on the y-axis, which is this constant line. And now we, add, uh, we need to add a few things in here. So uh, let's do that. So on the x-axis, let's actually go to add data in here, go to our, where is it, progress bar, and then choose, in this case, our values, which is uh, the value in here. So go with value here, and now we got our line. I can make this bigger here, so, but hopefully you can see it. Okay, now we got our line chart in here. Next, uh, beside this, uh, on the constant line, we also like to have, click on add data here, go to our uh, progress bar chart here, and then let's just use now the profit bar. Click on profit bar, and you see that now we have here our profit bar, which is 37 because we rounded it, but it's reflecting here this 37.27% currently in here. Okay. okay, so now we have the part of the profit margin we have achieved. And by now we can already filter this chart. So just as an example, if I go to my data view here and I choose, for instance, from the orders table, let's just say we're going to use the category. So click on category here and then just change this to a slicer. Okay, here we got our categories, and now we'll go, for instance, click on cheese. You can see that this changes as well as this one because this value reflects what we have here, right? If I go to desserts, I have desserts. If I go to drinks, I have drinks, fish, and so on. So this changes in here, so far so good. However, this is a little bit too small for me currently, so that's not exactly what I want. So we need to modify this a little bit. So let's do that. So let's select the chart in here. 
And then we go to the formatting options of the chart. Go on here and click on more options so that this uh, formatting here appears. If it doesn't for you, you could always go to the view option here and also uh, just check it here and it also appearing here. So at first, what I would like to do is I like to fix my axis here. So I will choose um, values for the y-axis between, in this case, zero is my minimum and the maximum I have is 100. The reason why I do this is because the, I chose numbers for 50 in the middle and 65 and 30 uh, for my high and the low. That's why I'm going to use those numbers. Of course, if you choose different numbers, you need to adjust it a little bit. So now we have that. Okay, so far so good. Now next, let's actually go down. And what I would like to see is, uh, where are them? The, the arrow bars. So let's click on arrow bars here. And let's scroll down. Okay. And now for the series, okay, currently select constant line. Now for the bar itself, let's actually first enable the arrow bars. Click on on. And then uh, we don't want to have bars. So let me just uncheck the bars actually. What I want instead is I want the arrow band. So let's click on arrow band. Next, uh, match series colors, that is fine. Set the transparency here to zero. And then uh, for, of course, now we need the values, upper and lower bounds. And here, let's go to upper bounds, click on add data, go to progress uh, bar chart and click on high. Okay. And now click on add data for the lower bounds and go again to progress bar chart. And now we click on, where is it? Low. So now we can see that our line, which is really thin, uh, a little bit too thin for me, we can still see it for the profit bar here, is now uh, a bar, right? Uh, thicker. So that's why you can choose different values. Maybe that's too thick for you. Then just adjust the 65 and 35 values, which, are, which I've chosen. But you can see that you can make it as big uh, as you want. So it's, re it's really quite flexible the way you, uh, you want it. Okay, so that's it actually for the constant line. Now we're gonna do the same here, of course, for the profit bar. So click on profit bar. And now again, we enable, uh, where's it? Uh, the options we need to, uh, upper and lower bound. Let's actually click on add data. So for the progress bar, we're going to use the high. For the lower bound uh, for the progress bar, we're going to choose the, where is it? Here, the low. Then of course we need to enable it. And currently that looks a little bit off the chart. So that's not what I want. Let's untick the bars here. And instead, let's go on here and let's actually choose error band. And you can see that currently it's transparent. 80%, that's why it looks like that. But if we just remove it or set it to zero, then of course now we have it like that. So there's also a marker size in here, which I actually don't need here. And now uh, I can still see there's a little error here or something which I don't like, which is this line in here. But we are gonna cover this just in a minute. So that is actually for that, that is fine. We can go to the lines here actually and go to, where is it? Here, go to the profit bar. And then let's set this to, uh, in this case, zero. Okay, so we get rid of this. And we can do the same, by the way, for the constant line here and also set the stroke width here to zero. So because then this is gone and now we can see there is no line in here. So that still works. Click on drinks. Yes, that still works exactly the way we want it. You can see that this changes with the profit margin. So with our slicers and filters, either from a slicer in here or also from other visuals you might have in your your report. So finally, of course, uh, we could uh, further customize this. We can, of course, get rid of the, in this case, the uh, title on the on the axis. Of course, you probably don't want to see that, but this is something we can you can do on your own. Uh, the other thing I I like to change uh, show you is actually how you can add a little indicator here for your progress bar. So let's do that. Let's go inside. We're still in the formatting option. That's fine, but we need to add some data. Click on build uh, visual here. And now let's also add our final measure, which we created. Let's go to the progress bar in here. And then let's choose our profit symbol. And I can see that profit symbol is not uh, showing. Why is that? Well, the reason is I made a little mistake. If I take a closer look to my measure, let's go to our uh, data tab here and go to my, where is it? The profit uh, symbol, here it is. So around the profit margin to zero. Well, it is a percentage number, so it's 0 0.37% for 37%, for instance. Uh, so 0 0.37 for 30, uh, 37%. So actually, I need to round it to 2. So that was a mistake by me. So let's just fix it quickly. And you can see that here we get our dot. 
so far so good. Okay, so now we got actually our indicator here. And this indicator, of course, can be customized further. So let's go to build a visual here. Uh, to the formula options, sorry for that. And then let's actually go to, where is it? At first, let's actually select what we want to change. And we don't want to change the line itself. We actually want to add here a marker. So let's turn on marker here. Currently, it's selected for all of them. So that's something we need to change. So for the constant line, we turn it off. Also for the profit bar, we don't want to show it. We turn it off. We only want to show it for the profit symbol. That is fine. And here we just change it. And you can use any kind of indicator symbol you want. But in this case, I'm using this triangle because it looks nice. And of course, you can play around with the size. You can make it bigger if you want. As you can see, just change it. OK, so we have this as well. And uh, finally, of course, I also like to add maybe the data labels. So I'll click on on here. And uh, one more time, we go to the constant line. We disable it for them. We also go to the profit bar. We also disable it here. And finally, the only label we want to keep actually is on the profit symbol. However, we want to customize this. In this case, we don't want to show the 30, which was just a dummy value for us, just to plot it correctly. Instead, we turn this custom label on, go to add data here, and then we just choose, in this case, our measure, which is the profit margin. And check this option here, and now we have the profit margin here. And then, of course, maybe for uh, display units, in this case, that's fine, but for the values, actually, I don't want to show the decimal numbers. So I stick to 48% uh, for now. Of course, you can customize this if you want to show it 48.41%. Of course, leave it. In this case, I just get rid of the dot for 1%. And uh, that's actually fine. And the only thing left to do is maybe adjust here also the color. Of course, if you have it like that, you can turn it to white. Uh, that would be an option. Uh, but also um, would be another option to just change the position. So if I say, uh, for instance, I like to keep it black, like that, it's difficult to see right now, but if we go to the position and say instead we would like to show it under, of course now you can see that now the label is below. And of course you can also play around with the label offset, so it's currently set to eight. If you shrink this, you see that you can also adjust the label closer to this actual symbol if you wanna do that. So it's up to you. I suggest to play around with these settings here and just customize it the way you want it. But that's basically it, that is the whole trick. And now, uh, based on a line chart and based on our uh, helper measures and uh, helper table, we have now created here a progress bar chart. Of course, further customize the header um, and the axis. As I said, you told you before, you can also uh, well uncheck to show the axis at all. So you only have the bar itself. And then you can just play around here. And just now the end consumer of your report can now simply switch what he or she wants to see. And you can see that this is dynamic and adjust uh, the way you want it. Okay, like that. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful to you. It's a great trick as far as I can see it. And hopefully you can see this and use this in your own reports. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.